Welcome back to Newsbeat. I'm Morgan Beard with your Tiger TV Sports Report. We're fresh off of Thanksgiving break as most students either went back home or did a bunch of nothing. And if you're like me, you did a little bit of both. But the LSU men's basketball team went against the grain last week with a trip to the beach for the 2014 Paradise Jam. Yet just as the rest of us, the team makes their way back to campus, but with a major non-conference matchup against the UMass Minutemen on the agenda. While fans recovered from their turkey hangovers, there was no rest for the Tigers heading into Tuesday's game, coming off the hills of a win over McNeese State. But right here, you see Jarrell Martin starting early and often with the slam. He would finish with 12 points on the night. And up next, Josh Gray with the sick dish to John Odo. You don't see him do that too often. That was two of his five points on the night right there. Everyone in the PMAC happy and feeling good. But UMass right there will make a three-point maxi Esho. They only shot 15.4% on the night. A little bit later, Tim Quarterman off the bench, 15 points on this night. That was three of them right there. And as you can see, Mike the Tiger loving it. So is the PMAC crowd as LSU was soaring high on Tuesday night. Tim Quarterman again, like I said, off the bench, throws it to Josh Gray. He throws it down into the bucket. Josh Gray finished with a career high, 25 points. And here's another look at his athleticism. The and one on the play. Josh Gray, one of his best nights as a Tiger. And as you can see here, 25 points, five assists. Tigers beat them 82 to 60 for another non-conference victory. Now, after the game, the coaches and teammates knew all along what Josh Gray brings to this team. And last night's 25-point performance was no surprise. Yeah, I felt like we came together as a team and, you know, we uh, had the same mindset and the same goal. And I felt like we came out all on the same page and we got the win tonight. And for guys to come out and play tonight and accept the challenge uh, out of the gate, first half, thought played extremely well, both ends of the floor, executing offensively, defensively. You know, Josh, uh, you know, he had a good game today. You know, and we, if we can get that out of him where he's attacking the basket, you know, creating plays for the team that, that open up things for, you know, a lot, most of the other players on the floor, you know, for me and Jordan and, you know, the shooters on the wing. It's a big confidence booster coming into Thursday because Thursday is going to be another big game. And, uh, but it's, it's great. We're going to have a good vibe going into Morgantown. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good win for us. We needed it pretty bad, you know, just to show, just to see what we were capable of doing, uh, show what the, the work of the few past days has been for. And um, tonight was a big win. It all showed out uh, everything we worked on in practice. Now the 24-hour rule is in effect as the team hits the road to Morgantown for an SEC Big 12 matchup against West Virginia on Wednesday. The 5-2 and two Tigers will look to yet again bolster their out-of-conference schedule against the undefeated Mountaineers inside the WVU Coliseum. Led by head coach Bob Huggins, the Mountaineers have already beaten the likes of George Mason, UConn, and Boston College so far this season. LSU looks to bring West Virginia their first loss as tip-off is set for 6 o'clock p.m. and will air on ESPN2. Now things haven't been as smooth for the 2-4 and four women's team, however, as their last two games of the Hardwood Tournament of Hope were canceled due to facility conflicts. The Lady Tigers will shake off the rust and finally return to action versus Louisiana Tech on Wednesday in the comfy confines of the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. The Lady Tigers look to end a three-game losing streak and get back on track against the Lady Bulldogs. Tip-off is slated for 6 p.m., and the game will be televised nationally on the SEC Network. Now, while the basketball team's postseason fates won't be decided until March, it's LSU Volleyball that has received a bid to the NCAA Tournament. After closing out the regular season, winning 14 of their final 15 matches to the tune of a 19-8 overall record, LSU now sets their sights on the Oklahoma Sooners for their first-round match set in Eugene, Oregon on Thursday night. First serve is at 6.30 p.m. Now, Tiger football is still making headlines as they return to the top 25 this week at number 23, following their Thanksgiving defeat at the Texas A&M Aggies, which was due large part because of freshman running back Leonard Fournette. On Monday, Fournette was announced as the SEC Freshman Player of the Week following his career-high 146 yards on the ground. That included this truck right here seen around the world as it was featured on ESPN Sports Center's top 10 plays, taking the spot at number one. Just look at that grown man making them look like boys out there. Now, this is the third SEC honor of the year for Leonard Fournette as he finishes the regular season with 891 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. Now, the Tigers do have one game left, and with an 8-4 record and a fifth-place standing in the SEC West, no one knows exactly what kind of bowl LSU may land. But popular, popular opinion slates LSU in the Tax Slayer Bowl located in Jacksonville, Florida. The SEC Big Ten or ACC tie-in could mean a game against Iowa, Louisville, or Minnesota. Other possible bowl games include the Avocare Texas Bowl against the Texas Longhorns or the Belk, Belk Bowl. Now, AD Joe Oliva has already come out and said he doesn't think that makes too much sense. But the other possibilities are the Liberty Bowl or the Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, with only one week to go in the college landscape, a lot of teams will know their destinations for the bowl season as bids will be announced this Sunday, December 7th. 
And that's it for sports. Stick around for more news coming up after the break.